a learner, first and foremost, you know, to stay humble, to never be, never see yourself as an expert or a master of anything. Um, and, um, and to know um, academically and spiritually and practically um, the things that are around you, because you can be outside, you can have a kid outside day in, day out, he's sleeping outside, he's hiking outside, and you could be missing a lot of growth and teaching opportunities. Um, but if you know the plants, if you know the stones, if you know the clouds, if you know the rain, if you know the creek, if you know the animals and their tracks and their scat, um, and if you know medicines, if you know food, if you know uh, tools and the materials that we're provided with and things like that, um, then you can introduce kids to these teachers and you can teach them how to start listening and seeing and learning. Um, but you have to have that education first. And I think it's really good, and I really loved, um, and Anastasi, how we had, we taught the science of, of the different elements of nature. And we taught the um, metaphors of the different elements of nature, and we also taught the practical uses and different skills that you could make with the materials provided by these different elements of nature. And, um, and that way it approaches it in a way that, you know, everyone is going to connect to one of those you know, experiential or spiritual, emotional or academic. And, uh, but you've got to know it first so that you can invite that. And just as you're hiking along, you can say, oh, guys, what do you know about this plant? Who knows what this is? Okay, well, did you know that in this season it provides this food? Um, did you know that the, that the spines have a toxin in them? Um, did you know that, um, you know, it can be used to, to make this or that tool to create this or that useful or beautiful thing? Um, and that's of interest to people, you know? And um, it really gives dimension to the experience. It makes it a lot more fruitful, a lot richer, a lot deeper. And that's something that they're going to take with them. And they're going to, when they leave the program, um, they're going to be connected to nature. They're going to still have that relationship. Can you give me an example of that, an uh, example you had with a, a student? Yeah. So I had one uh, young lady who I walked with who um, the stakes were probably the higher for her than, than any other student I've ever had because she had attempted suicide in, in a really serious way a couple times already. And she was very intelligent, very frank, and it wasn't drama. She was dead serious. And she was like, so I'm here to find meaning. And if not, I'm just going to, I'm going to excuse myself. I'm going to leave. And she meant it. And um, so she was always trying to get really deep with things and um, particularly asking me spiritual questions and about God. And, um, and one day we were hiking along and we saw this um, plant that I know is a Christmas tree cactus and, um, and it's got these really good berries that are like candy. And so I said, oh girls, this is a Christmas tree cactus um, and it's got these, these fruit that are so good. But wait, wait, you know, like um, it's got these little spines all over it and some of them are teeny tiny invisible. You've got to be so thorough in removing these spines. You have to be so careful in removing the berry from the plant. Otherwise, you're going to be regretting it for a couple of days because you're going to have little spines between your fingers that you can't find. You're going to have them in the roof of your mouth. Um, so have at it. And of course, some people were very thorough. Some people, you know, didn't really do their due diligence like I had recommended. And um, and so this young lady comes up to me, you know, with the spines in her the roof of her mouth and between her fingers. And she says, why would the creator put this in the middle of the desert where we want it and would enjoy it the most? It's like this sweet, juicy, you know, fruit. And then, uh, and make it punishing. Why would the creator do that? And I was kind of just tired of her asking me to know the mind of God at that point. And I um, just said, I don't know. Why don't you go do the making of an asking and find out? Let me know what you discover, you know? And I was kind of just dismissing her, but also, you know, turning her to like, hey, you know, I'm not the healer. I don't have all the answers. Let me direct you to the source, you know? Anyway, I thought that I was done with it I thought we had dismissed it but she came back to me a few hours later she said I figured it out I'm like you figured what out she says I figured out why the Christmas tree cactus is like that and why those berries have those little spines all over them and I said do tell and she said it's to teach us it's a lesson and it teaches us that um that some of the best things um need to be approached with prudence and wisdom and that there are rules and boundaries that have to be followed and that some of the things that would do us good will also do us harm if we if we break those rules and if we don't approach them properly and if we're hasty um, and if we take things out of context and if we skip ahead. And I was like, yes, wow. And I was like, what's some examples? We talked about human sexuality and intimacy as well as some other examples of that and just went, I mean, we were both just expanding our minds in that conversation. So in, this is an example of me directing her to to listen and figure out and then her sharing her awakening with me and kind of being my teacher you know
know, and kind of being my trail walker. So, um, yeah, just as an example to kind of like have your eyes open. What what is out here that is a lesson, you know, and who needs it and what are the different applications of it? We would have sorry, we would have conversations around the fire at night about the you know, starting by talking about stones. And we just the lessons would get so deep and the places we would go, you know, with these conversations about what stones have to teach us and different examples and different experiences where a stone taught us and and how we like the stones sometimes in good ways and in bad ways. And, um, you know, so just uh, don't it's it's good for the kids to be outside. That's good. It's going to do it's going to be beneficial if the kids are outside. Um, but don't miss out on some of that depth and richness you know, for these kids. Make sure you're connected with it. Make sure you continually are learning it, um, both on and off the trail, so that you can bring more. You have more tools in your, you know, in your gatherings bag, um, you know, metaphorically speaking, as well as literally. Um, huge piece of advice I would give is just watch out for your ego constantly, constantly. Make sure you're being humble. Constantly be aware of, is this about me? If you're telling a story from your life, that can be a powerful teaching tool. Or it can be a way to make a cheap, easy, quick rapport with someone because it's like, oh, yeah, when I was living on the streets, too. You know what I mean? So you just have to check yourself. You have to check your way of being. You have to check why you're doing what you're doing and really try to make it never about you. And I would say um, never uh, give in to the temptation to uninvest because it is a hard job. It's hard physically and it's hard emotionally. And you're carrying other people's burdens and you're taking on so much. And, to, and I believe firmly that you cannot serve people you don't love you can't really influence someone you don't love and loving hurting people hurts um, and the temptation never stops it never goes away to just uninvest to back off a little bit to shut your heart down a little bit um, but I my advice from having done it both ways and leaving a shift with regret spend it all spend yourself entirely while you're out there and then come home exhausted and feeling amazing you know and I've, I've done weeks, the same, you know, both ways. And just stay invested. Stay fully invested. Don't accept the excuses that are going to come to you to, um, to distance your, yourself and to make it not personal. Um, their successes are my successes. Their, their failures and their bumps in the road, those are mine too, you know. Um, but they're not an extension of my ego. Their success isn't like, because you'll come to resent someone if, if they're an extension of you. And if their success makes you look good and feel good about yourself, you know, you'll come to resent them if they're not progressing. And then you'll just spend all your time and invest in the person who's thriving so that you can feel like that you're a part of that. When really that's them, you know. So it's kind of almost sounds contradictory, but like um, be invested, but detach your ego. Thanks for watching. Please like this video and subscribe. The Primitivus Project is made possible by the generous sponsorship of Wingate Wilderness Therapy. To learn more, visit wingatewildernesstherapy.com.